Welcome back. In the last video, we looked at the fundamental aspects of martensitic transformation. In this video, we'll look at more applied aspects of martensitic transformation using trip steels and shaped memory alloys as two examples. Looking at steels first, we know that for iron uh, at high temperature, the crystal structure is FCC. Uh, there's one unit cell shown here, that's FCC unit cell structure. If we connect some of the atoms, it gives you an octahedron. In iron, the interstitial sites are shown by these red dots, and you can see the interstitial site for FCC iron is the octahedral site. If we alloy iron with carbon, carbon will sit at this site. Very shortly, we'll see why this is important. We can extend the unit cell, so let's just do copy and paste. Just from very simple rearrangement, you can form a new crystal structure highlighted by the green box, and this is the martensite. Let's have a closer look at this martensite unit cell. First of all, it has a BCT crystal structure that's body-centered tetragonal. Second, a lot of carbon atoms, they now sit on the vertical edges of this BCT structure. Martensitic transformation in steel does not stop here. There is a concept called Bain strain. The tetragonal structure will actually shrink along the vertical direction. The vertical direction is also referred as the C direction. If you recall from the previous slide, and as you can see from this slide, carbon atoms they sit on the C axis of the tetragonal unit cell. Therefore, the final C number depends on how much carbon you have in the material. In other words, the C of A ratio of your martensite depends on the carbon content in the steel. When we first introduced the concept of martensitic transformation, we said it can lead to lattice dilation, shear, and a combination of dilation and the shear. For martensitic transformations in steels and uh, in shaped memory alloys, we'll see later, it's a combination of dilation and the shear. The figure on the left shows the examples of martensitic transformation assuming the material is not constrained. The edge down the bottom shows the habit plane. As you can see, the top right corner, the strain after undergoing the martensitic transformation is huge. In fact, the further you get away from the habit plane, the larger the strain is. This has two implications. First, if the martensitic transformation is constrained, the further you get away from the habit plane, the higher the strain is. So energetically, it is unfavored to grow thick martensite plates because of the high strain. This is why martensite grains have either plate or lenticular shape. Second, if the martensitic transformation is constrained, you always build up strain inside the martensite grains to relax the elastic strain, usually either a lot of dislocations or a lot of twins will be generated. The high dislocation density is the reason why martensitic steels are so hard, and the high density twins is the reason why shape memory alloys have shape memory effect. Let's move on to trip steel. Trip steel to trip stands for transformation induced plasticity. Trip steels are widely used in automobiles. If you look at the example on the right, uh, a lot of high strength steels, especially the extra high strength steels and ultra high strength steels, these are made from trip steels. Trip steels, they have exceptionally good mechanical properties, usually like super high strength and very good ductility. If we look at the microstructure, it usually contains ferrite, bainite, and retained austenite. Retained austenite is the key ingredient that enables the trip effect in steels. The TEM micrographs down the bottom right are from my friend, Professor Hong Wei Yan's group at the Taiwan National University. The dark grains in the bright field TEM images are 
the retained austenite. Trip steels are usually alloyed with the austenite stabilizers such as carbon, silicon, and manganese. In the previous slide, I mentioned the trip steels that exhibit exceptionally good mechanical properties. Then what are the numbers? If you look at the figure on the right, the strength of the steels can easily go to one gigapascal, and the elongation can be about 30%. This is amazing. I'll just quickly throw at you some numbers from other alloys so you have a good sense how good the trip steels are. For most aluminum alloys we use, they are generally 300 megapascals in strength. These are aluminum alloys used in aerospace applications, not the aluminum foils used in your kitchen. Next, let's look at why trip steels have exceptionally good mechanical properties. The underlying reason is because under stress, the retained austenite can undergo stress-induced martensitic transformation. Martensite is a hard phase in steel. As the formation proceeds, you have more and more martensite present in the material that hardens the steel. Moreover, the stress-induced martensite can also contribute to strain hardening of the steel, which delays the plastic instability. The figure on the right shows the true stress, true strain uh, curves of the three steels, as well as the strain hardening rate curves of the three steels. The plastic instability happens when these two curves intersect. The stress-induced martensite can contribute to the strain hardening, which delays the intersection of the strain hardening rate curve and the true stress and strain curve. And this provides improved ductility. There has always been a misconception that the really good ductility in trip steel is because phase transformation can offer additional strain. This is not correct because the phase transformation strain is so small, which really plays a critical role is the stress-induced martensite that offers strain hardening that delays the plastic instability. Here are some cool videos of shape memory effects. If you heat the wire up, it will spring back to the original shape. The question is why shape memory alloys such as nitai have shape memory effect? The answer is martensitic transformation. For shape memory alloys, at high temperature, it has a cubic unit cell, and at a low temperature, the martensite has the monoclinic unit cell. In constrained martensitic transformation, when you cool down the system, the austenite will phase transform into highly twinned monoclinic martensite. The twinned martensite retains the overall shape of your material. When you plastically deform the twinned martensite, detwinning can happen to accommodate some of the plastic strain when you heat the system back up, it will spring back to the original austenite shape. And this is why shape memory alloys have the shape memory effect. The shape memory effect described in the previous slide is the one-way shape memory effect. Through proper training of the material, you can also achieve the two-way shape memory effect. For the two-way shape memory effect, at high temperature, it is austenite. At low temperature, it is E-twinned martensite. Therefore, at high temperature, the material can be of one shape, and at a lower temperature, the material can be at a different shape. I found this video online. I assume the water on the right is hot, and the one on the left is cold. You can see uh, the spring uh, spreads out uh, when it, it was dipped in the hot water, and uh, um, the first one, when it's left at the room temperature to cool down, it slowly shrinks back to the original shape. The second one was dumped into the cold water and it shrinks back to the original shape straight away. And this is the two-way shape memory effect. The material phase transforms between austenite and the D-twinned martensite. The last thing I'd like to discuss about shape memory alloys is the super elasticity. Super elasticity is also a trip effect. Uh, we start from austenite. If we apply a load, the austenite will phase transform into a detwinned martensite. When the load is removed, it will phase transform back to austenite. 
the material can experience fairly large strain without plastic deformation. The example on the left is the tire of the Mars rover. The tire is made from nitide wires. The scientists and engineers at NASA took advantage of the super elasticity of shape memory alloys, designed these super compliant and damage tolerant tires to help the rover explore rocky and uneven mass surfaces. This is the last video for the phase transformation in metals and alloys series. Here, I'd like to acknowledge the support from the National Science Foundation, NSF. This online video series uh, is part of the outreach activities funded by NSF DMR, and our research project was understanding the interplay of precipitates and dislocations on the reversible martensitic transformation in cyclically actuated nickel titanium hafnium shaped memory alloys with Dr. Judith Yan and Jonathan Madison as the program managers. I hope these videos are useful for your studies and research and see you in the next video series.